Ah, the faithful alarm clock. The only thing that wakes us up in the morning. But sometimes, it's just not loud enough. Or sometimes they're just too lazy to get up. Yup, that's me during school days. And what could be worse than being late for something? Let's say for work, for school, or even for your first date. I'll admit, I'm a pretty heavy sleeper myself. It actually takes three alarm clocks to wake me up in the morning. So I had to think of a solution, and that was to hook up a car horn to my alarm clock so I'll never be late again. Ow. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to an all new episode here at Tech Builder. This week we're going to build the horniest alarm clock that you've ever heard of. But first, you'll need a bell type alarm clock and a 12 volt automotive car horn. You can get a really cheap one from eBay. Next, you'll need a 12 volt 2 ampere wall wart. You may also need some tools like your soldering iron and your glue gun. You'll also need a plastic container for housing the circuit of the project, a universal perf board for mounting the components on, a high capacity electrolytic capacitor. This will give a little jump start, a little boost for the car horn when it starts to kick in. You'll need an IRF 540N MOSFET. This will act as our digital switch, something like a solid state relay. You'll also need a 2M3906 PNP transistor to drive the MOSFET. A 10 kilo ohm 1 4 watt resistor and a 1 kilo ohm 1 4 watt resistor. For the miscellaneous, you'll need two 3.5 millimeter audio jacks, a female DC socket, and an on and off switch. You may also need some wires for connecting the components together. I started the project by taking down my alarm clock. I wanted to see what was going inside, so I removed the back panel. And as I did, I found this tiny little DC motor that turns around and hits the bells. I went to check out the voltage that I was getting through the motor's terminals just to make sure that this thing will work with my project. The result was quite pleasing and was within the range. This thing will do just fine. The motor took a lot of space, so I desoldered the wires and removed it from its place. Then I drilled a hole large enough for a 3.5mm audio jack to fit through. Then I used a drop of super glue to glue the auxiliary in place. After that, I soldered the wires from the motor going to the auxiliary port. The reason why I did this was to make the cable of the project detachable. It may come in handy someday. Once you're done, you can put everything back together. Okay, now it's time to build the driver circuit. The driver circuit is like a solid state relay. It's a circuit that can detect faint signals, something like what our alarm clock is giving off. Once it detects something, it'll let electricity from the power source to get to the car horn. Here's a schematic diagram that I prepared for you. Just follow it. As long as you know how to read one, you're good to go. In making the driver circuit, the first step is to make your perf board to fit inside your plastic container. I did that by cutting it down using my shears. Then I mounted the components to their respective places. Here's a little tip. Mount them at the middle of the board to avoid hitting the plastic container. Use tape to prevent the components from wobbling during the soldering process. Be sure to have the diagram beside you as a reference for connecting the components together. When you're done, strip down the wires to the length that you'll need. Let's leave that for now and let's work on the plastic container. I drilled a hole for the audio jack, the DC socket, and for the wires that goes through the car horn. Then I applied some hot glue to prevent the circuit from moving around inside the plastic container. The external components were also glued in place as well, ones like the female DC socket and the auxiliary port. After doing so, carefully solder the wires to their respective connectors. You now have your driver circuit. Now let's work on the car horn. I couldn't find a connector for the car horn so I decided to chip off the plastic to reveal the terminals. Then I used some hot glue to mount the driver circuit to my car horn. Finally, I soldered the wires from the driver circuit to the car horn. Now it's finished. And after all that hard work, it's now time to test it. Grab your wall wart, then plug it into your wall outlet. Then plug your wall wart's DC output to your driver circuit. Then plug an auxiliary cable from the driver circuit to the modified alarm clock. There you have it, the noisiest and horniest alarm clock that you have ever had. With this, you'll never be late again. Just make sure your neighbors are fine with it. Ow. 
Thank you for watching the sixth episode of Tech Builder. If you do like the project, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my upcoming videos, you can press the subscribe button to stay tuned. If you have any comments or suggestions, you can follow me on my Twitter account. And if you're more active on Facebook like I am, you can like my Facebook page to stay updated. Coming soon on Tech Builder, we're going to modify this cheap China RC car and turn it into an insanely fast Bluetooth controlled RC car. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned.